Hi again, everyone, and welcome to another episode of RV Business Capital Talk, sponsored by Eric Sell. I'm Rick Kessler, and my co-host with me, as always, Sherman Goldenberg, and we're from RV Business, and we have a special episode today on Go RVing. And joining the two of us today is Karen Redfern. Karen is the Senior VP at RVIA and the Chief Marketing Officer in charge of Go RVing. And the two new co-chairs joining us today, Mike Reagan from Crestview RV Center in Texas and Renee Jones from Thor Industries, where she's the Vice President of Marketing. Everyone, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Howdy. Good, thanks for having us. Well, before we talk about the new board makeup and all of that, I know we wanted to kind of set the stage a little bit about the Go RVing program specifically. Uh, now about to enter its 27th year, which is pretty remarkable. Um, since I'm only 26 years old, Sherm, can you take us back 27 years to uh, to the formation? But real quickly, I, I, I guess I just wanted to emphasize what a, what a huge thing Garbing has been for this industry and how when it started up, uh, kind of as a mirror image of Anita Bryant in the, in the, and I was just doing some homework, the Florida Citrus Commission and their promotion uh, of, uh, of the citrus industry down there. Uh, it was huge. And, and it has been, frankly, ever since. Um, this is our opportunity for kind of a reset interview. Where are we? Jump. Is it really been 27 years? <laughs> It has been hard to believe, but it really has been. That's amazing. Um, yep. uh, so how is Garvin today? Let's try that question. We're doing great. Hopefully the industry agrees with all of that, but no, <laughs> the program itself is doing fantastic. Technology has changed, of course, over the time since we started. So the way we advertise and market to consumers has changed immensely. Um, and that the industry has changed immensely, which is the reason why we've done a little bit of a reset with our board of directors for Go RVing, as well as the Go RVing Coalition. Oh, we, we used to call it a, a coalition. Correct. Do we still? Yes. Okay. The difference from RVIA's perspective is a committee is made up of RV Industry Association members. Coalition includes... The, as in the case of Go RVing, dealers, maybe some, um, we have other committees that have people from the campground industry. And the Go RVing Coalition has always invited in some of the state campground and RV associations throughout time. So we're considered a coalition and not a committee. And, and RVIA and RVDA still to this day, the main, the spine of this organization. Right. Which is why we have Mike representing the RV dealers and Renee representing the manufacturers or the RVIA member side. So, so today, uh, uh, brief us on and the rest of the industry on, on uh, the update uh, for Garvin. What is it today? Sure. Well, the reason for the changes um, to the co the governing of the coalition and the. Um, board of Directors is that six years ago, we expanded the Go RVing Board of Directors to six seats, which included the two presidents, association presidents, the two association chairs, and our co-chairs, which this year will be Renee and Mike. And then we've also last fall added two what I would consider at-large seats, one appointed by each of the two trade associations. So there's an additional um, RVIA and RVDA rep on those. But the industry has changed so much since we launched that many of our member companies have their own marketing teams. When we started, the reason that Go RVing came into existence was that the industry didn't really market itself to consumers. So we created this body to create advertising and marketing materials to entice consumers to get involved. And as things have changed, we wanna make sure that Go RVing is really being the best partner we can with all of our members and going in the directions that we need. We're at the very top of that big purchase funnel. So we wanna make sure whatever we're taking on and we push the down that funnel, to our members and we want to make sure we're pushing them there in the right ways and making sure that the consumers 
get the bigger picture from us before they move along the way. And agencies, uh, Karen, have uh, played a, a consistent role from, since day one, haven't they? Yes. I mean, when you're doing a national marketing program or advertising program, you need agencies that have that big reach, some national agencies. So we've always had a, a you know, well-respected national creative agency, media buying agency. And as we've moved into the digital world, even that digital agency to create our websites so that we can really engage consumers when they first come to GoRVing. FCB being one creative. of the agency. Correct. FCB is our creative agency, their sister agency, UM is our media buying, and then Genuine out of Boston is our um, digital agency, website agency. And your, uh, go ahead, Rick. Well, uh, Karen, um, and before we get to Mike and, and Renee, one more question, at least for me, for, for Karen. Um, 25, 27 years ago when GoRVing started, it, what was the marketing method then? And how has it evolved to what it is now? Most of what the industry did for itself was marketing in one of the consumer publications that already existed, one of those magazines. So we were marketing to the already converted, people who owned an RV. And with that baby boom generation, it was a massive market. So there were lots of new people to keep attracting, to come in, and maybe somebody gave a copy of that magazine to their friends and family. But we weren't doing a true concerted push to bring in the people who didn't know anything about RVing. Um, obviously, dealers do a lot of their local marketing in their markets to you know for their sales, but we weren't doing anything to get the consumers really excited about this. So the idea was to do this umbrella program that really just talked about the joys and benefits of RVing and then let them to find the dealers and the manufacturers and the products that they're looking for. Once we got them kind of hooked, we we're setting that hook and they're reeling them in. That's what it is. It's a partnership. And you, you've you gone from those magazine platforms to primarily digital now, right? Yep, it was magazines, newspapers, and billboards initially. Yeah, you know, we got into national broadcasting when, you know, television. Then, of course, cable came along much stronger. But it's really the digital platforms that are the most effective and efficient dollar-wise for us. But with the digital, you can retarget. We get to grasp all those little cookie crumbs about our consumers. We know what they've been searching in their Google searches. We know what they're looking for and we can keep feeding them new ideas on how RVing will match up with some of the other things they already have going on in their lives. So how is the, how is the, the average, if that's the word, uh, RV prospect, Mr. and Mrs. America, running across your message today? I know you said digital, but where? where? We are always on 24-7, 365 days a year in search, on search engines. So we're optimizing what those consumers are looking for. When they're looking for family vacation, they get served a Go RVing ad or they get the link when they get the list that comes up, Go RVing is up to the top of that list as something for them to consider. Um, so that's one at way that we're always there. And then the others are serving up ads on the digital platforms where they're consuming either their entertainment, their news, their social media. Um, and so we use all of those in combination. We have our own social media platforms where we can serve up at what we call organic that we create. It's not paid advertising where we can tell those stories and the community interacts with the messages that we're putting out there to consumers so that digital allows us really to track that consumer and keep track of them better. Renee and, and Mike, what, what are your uh, perceptions of GoRVing as you step in? Jump in, Renee. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, th I think uh, GoRVing does a great job of really that high level awareness and getting people um, to somewhat educated about the RV lifestyle, making them just aware that RVing is out there and then that that's a better way to vacation, a safer way to vacation. There's a lot of different ways that we can go about that. Um, I'm really excited about joining um, joining the board and really um, working together with the team on the marketing uh, strategies so that we can really marry kind of what we're doing, making sure that 
that we're not really bidding against each other in page search. We're not competing against each other. We're actually working together, um, which is what all of us want to do um, so that we can maximize our investment and make sure that every person that is seeing something from GoRVing actually makes it to the manufacturers and to the dealers. And, and then they join the lifestyle, which is beneficial to all of us. And Mike? Yeah, I'm glad you started off the uh, the segment of talking about the history of GoRVing because my idea of GoRVing is the history is so rich and we've been the envy of other industries. If you look at, you know, some of the outdoor, other outdoor industries, GoRVing has made RVing popular what it is today. And it really is the history there. And so I don't know that any of us want to change that. I think we want to embrace that and really drive that home forward with new technologies and what's going on in, in the uh, advertising world today. You're right. People are moving away from uh, TV and cable and going more towards digital. So we've Gorbean has always been on the cutting edge and I think we we're there today. So uh, see that continuing. Let me uh, take care of some homework here that I probably should have done right off the bat. Um, Renee and Mike are succeeding two uh, longtime co-chairs, uh, the late Dan Pearson from Pleasureland RV Center, as well as Bob Wheeler, president over at Airstream. Um, big, big shoes to fill, but uh, both of you we know very well are, are certainly capable of filling those shoes. There are some other new board members, and I want to use my notes here. Uh, Amber Holm, Chief Marketing Officer from Winnebago Industries, as well as Sarah Marshall, and Sarah is the Marketing and Brand Manager for Great American RV. Um, Karen, it's not a coincidence that these new people coming on board are heavily involved in uh, marketing analytics, I would think. It was planned. <laughs> <laughs> now, and that's why I say the industry has changed so much that we've got all these great marketing minds out there and they're moving their individual companies in a certain direction. And that's why we want to make sure that everything is all in alignment. Um, and when we go into strategy sessions for Go RVing, making sure that we've got that input from across all the various segments of the industry. So the Go RVing Coalition is also going to be changing, which Renee and Mike will be heading up. And that will be a, right now it is a 14 member coalition. And again, it will be people that will be selected by the Go RVing Board of Directors. And they are people who are in that marketing capacity within their businesses. So again, we're pooling all of this knowledge across the industry and making sure that we are all going in that same direction. And what is it that we can help our members with? We do a lot of research through RVIA's research um, that, that Go RVing will commission. But are there studies out there that might be really helpful for the industry that they haven't launched that we could launch and it would be great for the entire industry to have that data and knowledge? You know, and are there other methods we want to start using? Um, you know, and just get that input from these fantastic marketing minds that we have throughout the industry now. Are you saying that the number of individuals on the coalition is expanding? No, it's shrinking dramatically. Okay, okay. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. To have that board that's not just so much of a sounding coalition, it really was like a sounding board that we we reported, we gave them information. We utilized a lot of them. We were making decisions maybe to on a campaign theme or a new agency, but we're trying to bring it into a smaller working group. And with Renee and Mike, sitting on that coalition, as well as Amber and Sarah, who are also on the board, they will be involved in all of those discussions that the coalition has so that when there is something that requires board of directors approval or you know, making sure that the board agrees in that, they've been in there in those discussions and heard all those details and can bring that to their peers on the board to help the, our team, the staff, move those through the right channels. Now, are the meetings of the coalition and or board, uh, I assume, still open to anyone in the industry who wanted to step in? Yes. Any board or committee will sometimes go into an executive session. But yes, we will still have that. The coalition will meet in June, where most people would often see us during the RVs Move America Week. 
and we will still have plenty of room for guests to come in and hear what's new. We've been doing presentations at the RVDA convention in November, and probably between those two will be those where we'll open the doors for everyone to come in and hear what's new um, and give us some of their interactions as well. Uh, maybe starting with Renee, uh, Mike, you the, and Renee, the two of you have barely, barely got your feet wet with this new co-chair position. Um, what are your thoughts so far? Uh, I'm really excited. I mean, we, we've had uh, one Zoom call and then we met in person at the RVDA um, conference and just it's a great group of people. It's been Great to have just open discussion across the industry as well. Uh, these there's folks on the board that um, don't normally have uh, discussions. I can say f at least from the manufacturer perspective, um, and it's just really it's great to put those collective learnings together and use them for the benefit of the entire industry and to really advance the industry. So excited about where we can go, how what 2024 looks like, what 2025 can look like. Um, and really being flexible and adaptable so that we can maximize our our success for the industry. Mike, is it a pretty big learning curve so far? It's 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 been said it's like drinking from a fire hose, um, <laughs> you know. But first of all, you, you talked about Dan Pearson. There's no way I think anybody can fill his shoes. He did such a wonderful job, and prior to him, even Tom Stennett. So yeah, uh, you know the history there is pretty rich with what they have. But um, yeah, our first meeting was was kind of overwhelming to me just getting my feet wet on this. So I don't know that uh, we have much. I'm glad Karen's here to tell us what we're doing because <laughs> I didn't know. <laughs> no, well, we're excited to have them on board as well. So um, well, before we close out, I kind of know our habits here. We're about there. Uh, I meant to uh, congratulate Karen uh, a little belatedly here on the Hall of Fame induction. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> My plaque is right there behind keeping me company. <laughs> there you go. You're not wearing your green jacket. Yeah, my green jacket. <laughs> I save that for special occasions. <laughs> hey, let's let's leave with this one last question, and it's pretty open-ended. Um, 2024 is right around the corner. Um, what can we expect maybe from Go RVing next year? Great things. Wow. Um, <laughs> now we're looking at refreshing our campaign a little bit. We're the go on a real vacation has really resonated with consumers, um, so we'll keep going along that direction, but bringing in some of the the some of the marketing messages that help us to target those growth markets within the industry that we're looking to reach. Um, focusing a lot on, especially as we know that. You know, the economy is tough, especially for those families that are looking to make, you know, take vacations, make large purchases. But if we're talking to those families, talking to them about that affordability, the the travel ease with the RVing lifestyle, those are the messages that we're going to focus on as we're trying to bring folks along in this next year so that when they do feel very confident in their personal you know, finances that they're ready to make that purchase. We've given them all kinds of great information about why it's so wonderful for their families and a great way to travel and build new connections. So that's what we'll be looking at for the coming year. Very good. Very good. Sherman? I I have nothing uh, additionally to, to add, uh, uh, but a question that I'll ask after we turn off their cameras here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, Renee, Karen, and Mike, thank you very, very much for your time. Also, of course, want to thank Eric Sell for their continued sponsorship. And uh, until next time, we'll see you guys down the road. Thanks. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much. <laughs>